Hello. You make sure that I am streaming. Yes, I am. Okay. So. And the first thing we are going to do, we are going to do the um, hi again, Ellen. And hello again, everybody. We're going to do first the silk screen. And, uh, and that is because while I'm going to do the uh, cane, the silk screen can bake. And then I can get the silk screen with the finish on. Hi, Judy, Christy, Teresa. Thank you for being here again with me. Um, remember, if you want to get the, the set, you go to tinypandora.com and I posted the, the link in the video description and I also posted the link for the uh, silk screen I used. So, what I'm going to do first though, before I place the veneer, will be to place the backing because I don't want to mess up on the veneer when I am doing the um, when I'm putting on the backing and I did go a little bit with some uh, uh, sanding on these so let me grab my black and as I said I'm going to do a very very thin black uh, backing and I'm going to use a sponge to slightly texturize it so, hi Lydia, Robbie, Judy, Aida, Gaylene, Laos, Deandl, and Cherry. So, I'm going to go first with this fairly thin. And see, this is definitely not long enough, but uh, it's too wide. So what I'm going with to do with it, I'm going to first do this. Get it through the pasta machine like this. And then I'll be able to uh, fold it one more time. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that always happen, Robbie? And I'm just figuring out how much because it's going to get a little bit uh, widened out until I get to the exact width that I need. So this should be almost good. It's still not good enough. So I want it to be pretty much like this, but then I can fold it and go one more time with it through the machine. So let's see. And there we go, and then fold it. And removing all the air. I know. And there we go. Now I'm at a good. So, first thing I need to do is obviously to place some bacon bond. And again, I'm going to fight with this a little bit. Yeah, there are so many goodies in uh, Teresa's store. I'm slowly, slowly building my sla my stash. There are so many other goodies that I want to get. So it's like every month I have a goodie in the <laughs> buying plan from various collections. I just hope to be able to, you know, now with my eyesight restore in a month or so 
and then if they, I can get on the diet and if they figure out finally my final uh, what you call it thyroid medication so I can get rid of some of this fatigue it will be absolutely fabulous so yeah once again normally I would do a lot of baking in between you know but because I don't want to extend the life to horrible lengths and the thing is why I love that Donna Cato uh, sponge and by the way I noticed that Donna Cato doesn't always have it so I don't know Teresa maybe you can start looking for something similar because it's one of the most sought after textures just because it's so easy to do a texture that you don't have to worry about messing it up uh, I don't think so I've never seen it in big, bigger bottles than this that's the largest bottle that I've seen it in And I'm going to, I'm trying to still hold my hand so you can see what I'm doing. I'm smoothing out this joint. And then making sure that I have no air pockets. Because that's the worst thing that you you can do and uh, I got asked a lot of times what do you do if you do have air pockets well what I do and it doesn't always look beautiful because it depends on what the um, um, pattern is but uh, usually when you get an air pocket you'll have like a bubble here so what I do I just sand that bubble down really good and then I might either paint or just place a very, very thin um, a sheet of clay on top of it. Yeah, you might want to ask her. I don't know. I saw that she started carrying Cernit. But uh, a lot of times I, I, I get... Because you saw I'm using that sponge a lot. And... Uh, a lot of times I'm trying to add it and I have the old link it doesn't work I go on her store and it's not there so I don't know I said I need to start trying various uh... yeah it's called clay yo I tried I, I said I need to start trying various uh... there are some air, air filters for uh, fish tanks that have that texture but uh, you need to try them and unfortunately they don't come in small packages like we, we need but if you find the one that we need you can get like I don't know 50 different pieces out of one roll hello again Darlene Yeah, no, I, I, as I said, I don't find it on her website anymore. Now, before I trim the, these edges, and see, this is why I don't have to worry with that texture. You don't have to worry if you have not a very uh, fine, smooth texture. Because I'm going to get the sponge. And why I don't trim yet? Because as you use the sponge, it's going to push the clay a little bit more.
And with this texture, you don't have to worry about fingerprints or anything, pretty much. Let's see if I placed it everywhere. I still have a spot here that... We are good. There we go. And now I can trim the excess here. And why I did place the black as a um, backing? Because it's going to be easy to uh, join with the veneer and smooth it out. And there we go. And now I'm going to place a whole shit ton of, pardon my French, Yeah, did you guys get your opaline sunnit from Clay Factory? The opaline is supposed to be like the porcelain with a little degree of translucency and it should be much better for flowers and <clears throat> things like that. I didn't open mine yet, but uh, what I want to see essentially first is... Uh, if a regular cernit mixed with translucent is the same thing as the opaline or if there is a difference. Because, for example, there is a difference between if you try to make your own porcelain white, it's not exactly the same if you mix the regular flat white with uh, translucent. It's not exactly the same same. So, I'm very curious. I'll make a few flowers to see how that goes. But yeah, you can look forward to if my health keeps to quite a bit of four gemstones with cernit and some flowers in the future and some more pardo. Oh wow, you were busy, Dar. You were super busy. Okay, now I'm going to use a little trick. yeah it might uh, and you can wrap this in aluminum foil if you want or in uh, masking tape if you don't want any lint and I'm going to place my thing here so that I won't be keep touching it you know and get the uh, bacon bond on my fingers and then put the bacon bond on the clay you know so not until all my veneer is in place and I'm going to start in the middle of it I'm not going to start on the side because I want it to be fairly symmetrical so it needs to be a little bit more towards the right because you want to try and touch the silk screen as little as possible while at the same time try to not catch air pockets. Okay. 
Because remember, this one you cannot send. And I keep moving it back and forth. Do you need me to bring the camera closer? This is an old broken bracelet holder. Okay, so I need to start extending a little bit. I'm going to very gently pull. Very gently, because I don't want to mess up my skill silk screen. the same pool on the other side. Okay. Because as I said, the color shifts have a glue element in them. So the risk of them cracking when you pull is minimal. to pull for about an inch. Oops. Don't break it. Yes, I did break it. Well, we're gonna do some rhinestones here. <sighs> Told you, sometimes it's hard to do during the live because you need to keep the camera on and do stuff so people can see what you're doing yeah it's Tina Holden no, I'm gonna fix this no worries very delicately and now gently go I'm not gonna take care of that uh, joint yet Or you can use a what you call it a um, paper towel holder. Put a toilet roll paper like this. Make a hole in the paper towel holder. 
and put one in the other. So now to explain to you the my whole process, normally if I didn't want to cut on the time, the way I do the bracelet actually would be to first make sure that all that underneath is smooth and sanded and if I have any cracks I will just uh, add some bacon bond and some very softened uh, black clay and then make sure that all my underneath is perfect and only then place the veneer and I know you're gonna say oh my god you have a line there it's gonna be gone no worries another thing that you can do if you want you can uh, place the veneer first and then you can come with the a gold backing or a purple backing and come and bring it kind of like to here to make a an edge you know but after you put the front veneer you bake and then you come and you put the backing and you make an edge to it like I did for the amber wood for this one you can see in the tutorial for this one how I did it And remember, I do not leave a lot of fingerprints because I file the tips of my fingers, not to the point of making my fingerprints completely disappear, but uh, not make them be so noticeable when I happen to. My main thing is the fingernails, not the fingerprints. Okay, now I'm going to very delicately cut the... I'm gonna need to get some new blades for my knife. Uh, depth perception hits again. Yeah. Good thing that there are always ways to fix things, most of the things. I mean, get all these crumbs out of the way. And then I'm going to come real gentle again here really gentle and now it's time to smooth everywhere so first I'm going with my finger over this and then first I get I have to fix this make sure you don't touch your silk screen with 
something to alcohol. Because you don't want to remove it. But you see, I have some areas that are not perfectly smooth, and that's because I didn't take the time to refine the underneath. And I suggest you do take the time to do that. This would be pretty much it, and it can go in the oven. If you want to get rid of some more of this, all you have to do is to actually bring some of the texture all the way up to here. Can go ahead and bake it. Wait, I said I was going to use some rhinestones on it. Duh. as gorgeous as I wish it was but as I said I'm it's a shortened version so okay so let's use some ABs yeah flat on paper on regular printing paper so I don't get any shininess oh come on now i hope i can use rain rhinestones because with the depth perception i might not at this point You have no idea how many rhinestones I'm vacuuming every week. Good job. I have a pen, a rhinestone picker, and this would be my third. One thing I can tell you, they don't, the stickiness doesn't last long. They dry out or something. See, I have this. But it's not working anymore. It doesn't pick up. Not even on the other, the fatter side. Because it's supposed to stick. Yeah, it's stuck one. Oh well. I guess the fatter side works again. And yes, I'm placing them randomly between the flowers. I could place something here, actually. Oops, this is upside down. Just a second.
dental wax yeah and you want to get the what's called the hot fix they are black on the back and those ones when they get when you bake the clay they bond with the clay I have a little feather mold here if I can find my cosmetic sponge It's a fairly crappy mold. I'm not even sure if it's going to work very well, but I'm going to try it. Because it's a sugar craft, it's not a polymer clay mold. Besides, remember, whenever in doubt, put an embellishment. That's the law. You can place here any kind of mold thingy. As long as it's not very big. And I'm just pressing to ensure that... Uh, it adheres really good to the back. Yeah, it's a peacock thing. Yeah, I know I promised I'm gonna do the peacock. I'll make it. I'll do it at one point or another. Hey, drop it, drop. This is painful to watch, I bet. And I got it backwards again. See how I'm my uh. Exacto touches the wrong height because I don't see where it is. So see how I have a dip here. You can always use an embellishment to hide the fault. And let me see there another one. No, but I could use a few more rhinestones here. Oh, come on. Not backwards. And now we are good to go. I'm gonna go put it in the oven. Yeah, th see the the thing is uh, that you need for a sugar mold uh, to remold it. I'll show you what you need. Let me put this in the oven and I'll show you what you need to do.
because if you use the stuff for push molds um uh, uh you will fail why because the problem with the sugar craft molds and fondant molds is that they are so soft much softer than the fondant and stuff that when you press the little patterns here they get squished and you don't get a very good uh, imprint and uh, the thing is uh, the thing is that if you want to do something let's say recast remold re something you need to use something that would be poured not the stuff that you have two parts and you mix it and then you push it that works for stuff that's hard not for stuff that's squishy for stuff that's squishy you need this silicone pourable silicone rubber that you pour on because that will not uh, squish anything it will mold in all the nooks and crannies let me put all of this back and then we'll take care of the cane pick a cane or two I have a ton of canes and I started putting a few on the not this one putting a few on the website already I'm trying to find something that's square why is this here? I have all kinds of elements. And this is also round. There we go, some square canes. Smaller canes. see if we can do something with those Tina okay so this would work uh, do I want to mix blue and yellow this would work this is this in very small This would be okay, not that. I don't want the rounds, that's for sure. Do I want hexagon? So what do you think, the hexagon blue? No, I had some green, glad wrap refocus here mm 
Uh, yeah, you can. You can use resin. Okay, why don't we do some hexagonal stuff? This would work perfect. Let me put these back. Because I know you always see the how to cover with squares, but I haven't seen many with the hexagons. These are squares as well. I think that these are special for pens. They are already reduced for pens. I have a lot of them already reduced for pens. Alrighty. So, first we need a uh, base clay obviously and because I want to go with this one even if this is I'm not going to use the wider one even if obviously I need more why because uh, when I'm going to start burnishing the slices they are going to get a little bit widened so I'm going to get me some of this on a fairly thin and I'm going to use a wax paper. It will probably need to be a little bit longer, but uh, yeah, I'm still hurting a little bit. And that's okay. I actually need to take a pill. Hold on. Oh, good thing you reminded me. I went a bit over because I forgot. That's why I'm hurting. Turkey soups? Oh, turtle soup. <laughs> Susan. Oh, yeah, I saw. She's a sweetheart. I love Susan. I actually have a something for her that I need to mail her soon okay so going to first cut this and I always like to wear I told you I always like to work on uh, wax paper because it's much easier to peel it without deforming then working on a tile. <laughs> I ripped paper perfect. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna have to really, really, really refocus this thing. To get the best. This should be good. Okay. Now I'm going to cut to use the four inch blade. Cut. 
Now I have a newer one and an older one. And remember, these were the ones that I used for the... These are the canes that I used for the um, turtles. That I did quite... Not too long ago. I did those turtle pendants. And this is made with the cane that I made during the 101 complex canes tutorial. So... I am going to cut me some slices. And try to keep them at about one millimeter. And on a hexagonal, you always, at each cut, you turn it because you don't want it to flatten out. So this should be enough of this one. Let's cut some of this one too. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five. I need five more. Two, three, four, And now again, I'm going to start in the middle. Hi, Donna. Okay, so I'm going to start in the middle and let me see, I have pretty much two slices. So, I'm going to place two like this. You can see what I'm doing. Then one is going to go, the other kind of cane is going to go like this. And you don't have to put them all in the same direction. I would recommend that you put them in different directions, not all facing the same, you know, because you get a little bit more dimension like that and then having them all in the same I didn't place this one well I got it wrong It's at exactly at that spot where I cannot see well. But I just messed up a whole slice. Oh well. This is not something where I'm going to be able to see very well. going to be skewed. Unfortunately. I need to start all over again. I messed up. 
I need the camera at a different angle so I can get closer and I can see what I'm doing. This is not going to work. See, that's the difference between when I make a tutorial and I can edit it out and when I'm on live. Turtle, su turtle soup beads. <laughs> because you guys keep messing up her name. It's turtle, turtle soup beads. Okay, now let's reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing too. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I told you if you get your eyes to get too dry, you can get macular degeneration. That was what my mother, my mother's problem was. And I need to refocus the camera. Okay, so now we can start, and I'm going to actually start with one of these to put it right in the middle. And then I will continue with these. You're gonna ask me why don't you do anything on the sides that that can be placed later what I'm interested in now is to place my slices properly and then I place the sides on those after I'm placing everything else I know the autocorrect. <laughs> I was messaging with Teresa earlier. I was telling her something, and somehow the word T appeared in the message. Where the heck did you come from? I never typed T. But some of these things can come out absolutely hilarious. And you've watched all those funny sites. Who? Flower bead. Written permission? Who's written permission? I don't think that you need that. Other people misunderstand the copyright notices. Like I have people asking me, well, too bad you do tutorials if I cannot do anything that's in your tutorial. Like, Did you read what my copyright notice at the end says? Oops, I made the wrong slice. Not this kind of slice. The other cane slice. Because uh, it's about the tutorial, not about what you make. Yeah, I, I, somehow I don't think that she's doing that. Written permission. I very much doubt it. Okay, let's grab a few more slices.
probably need about 18 more of these. We'll see here in a minute. Then I'll cut 12. For now. Yeah, I just keep buying the cheap keyboards every three or four months because they get messed up and it's easier to just buy a $10 one than to clean one and spend a ton of money on uh, air clay. When you place these, you want to consider there's like a line like this, and you want one of the sides of your hexagons to go on that line, and the other one to align with this. And this one goes with one corner and one corner in the middle, again on that line. some of the other ones. It might be enough. Yeah, and the beauty of the cane part is that even if you burnish and you still have some uh, differences here, You sand it and you get it all to the same level after it's baked. It's much easier than trying to get everything at the same level when it's raw. Yeah, I will look here in a minute and I will... Now I'm not going to put anything on the very edge here because I need to first wrap it and then after I wrap it that's when I'm going to put the very last uh, slices. But now I'm going to start filling these up. So all I do is simply to cut the slice in two. And place it here. So you cut it 
like this. I'm supposed to jump here. Delft? I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's very tilish. I did with the, one of the sponsor lives, I did the Moroccan tile one time. Okay, so now that I did this, I need to start burnishing. I'm going to grab some more wax paper. And remember, some wax paper is waxed on both sides, but some only on one side. And you always want the waxed side towards the clay. Your first thing is to press with your fingers because you want to press that clay in you don't want to flatten it so it would get deformed to the sides you want to practically press it down Then your next thing is to get an acrylic block and again press. And after that you can start 
either with the acrylic block but never roll don't roll like this okay rub instead with your roller And at this point, you don't care much about the surface being purely flat um, without ripples or anything. What you care is for it to come to the same level. And your second will be burnishing with the acrylic block that's a little bit more refined and yes you might have to spend several minutes doing this most of the um, renowned artists their pieces look so beautiful just because they take their time and they do a wonderful burnishing if you've seen like Sarah McCall uh, and uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, Shri Schreiber Schreiner. I forgot her name. And Donna Cato, and pretty much all the great artists. Their services are practically flawless because they take their time and they burnish properly and then after you burnish and after you place it and after you bake it because it's a cane so all the pattern will go through you can go ahead and sand it to perfection uh, surface and here we can see where we start getting and you can go very gently push the slices where they don't match perfectly but what you want you want to have a fairly flat and the wax paper is going to tell you whenever you see it whitened out that means that the clay is did not stick to the paper so that means it's recessed recessed Sh Sarah Shriver yeah And when you're at this point, then you can start very gently rolling. But make sure that you roll in all the directions and try to rub more than rolling. And we have a relatively well flattened I would do it more normally but let's not uh, extend this too much okay so again bake and bond and with this one definitely I will bake it after I put the veneer on and then come later and put the backing kind of like for the amber wood one and I will do a backing with one of the colors that are here probably I would go for a blue or even for that tan I, will, I was in Amsterdam Only that I don't remember much because I was so darn tired. I had the eight and a half hours layover. So I cannot tell you much. <laughs> I haven't been much, very far away from the airport. But yeah, it was a very tiring trip. And I know that I bought a whole bunch of stuff, but I don't remember why. I was tired. Uh, 
Okay. Now with this one, I don't really care. Like with the other one. About touching it. Because canes don't get worn off. So we need... We're gonna need one here. So... This should be pretty much it. So let's grab two slices of this. And one of the slices goes cut in two. manipulate it a little bit and the other one goes here oh you cannot even see properly why didn't you tell me and the other one goes here and now I'm going to pretty much get it to all towards the edge With the roller, you get it nice and flat. Okay, I don't need this anymore. see where I had the joint you need to get a little bit more over it And then gently refine the edge. And I guess that at this point people in the chat room have lost interest so I'm going to finish this offline and show the finished product on Facebook. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I'll see you all tomorrow.